everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Life with Lindsay. Today, we have Whip and Chat. Um, I am currently working on the Lollipop Daydream. Uh, this is a DIY Moonshop kit. If you'd like to see an unboxing for that, I'll link that up in the eye. Um, but if you're new here, hi. Welcome. My name is Lindsay. I do mainly diamond painting and some other crafting-related content, and I would love for you to like, subscribe, hit the bell, hop aboard the Hot Mess Express, um, if you've been here before, hi, welcome. So if you do not know what a whip and chat is, that is when I work on my current whip, WIP, which is work in progress. Again, that is Lollipop Daydream. Um, you can pull out whatever it is that you are working on and work alongside with me. It can be a household project. It can be a craft project. It can be while you're doing chores, while you're doing laundry, while you're working, while you're driving. Um, you can use it like a podcast in the background, however you want to do it. There is no right way or wrong way to whip and chat. I hope that you guys are all well. Um... I feel like maybe I shouldn't have the flash on because it's like giving a really bad shadow, but we'll we'll deal with that when we deal with that, right? Right? Um, so I will uh, be filming a post review on this one when it is done. Uh, if you guys did not hear the news that uh, DIY Moon Shop officially has closed, uh, I kind of touched base on that in my last video. I also... Uh, I don't want to say I alluded to it in a previous video, but I, this is not the first time I've mentioned it. Um, and I just want to say, like, before I get into when I do the post review for this, and I still have one more unboxing to share with you guys. Um, but I want to say this now, I guess. Sorry, I'm just readjusting. Um, that... Me sharing my thoughts and feelings on a canvas for a company that is closed is no different than me sharing my thoughts and feelings on a canvas from a company that is still open. I'm still going to be honest about my experience. And not that I assume anybody else out there is going to watch my post review because they have this particular canvas in their stash and they want to see how it came out. Maybe they do. I don't know. Um, this particular artist is available at other shops. So if this is if you like this artwork, you can find things in a similar vein from other shops, shops companies. I try to convert, combine two words there. Um, but the reason that I am still... Because I went back and forth on this. And you guys can tell me your thoughts down below. But the reason I decided that I, I think it's still important is there are a lot of people who watched me unbox this, saw my initial thoughts on it, and want to know if I still feel the same way from start to finish. Or they want to know, has my thought changed on them? And then there's also going to be a handful of people who, you know, they have a newer DRI Moonshop kit in their stash and they... Um, they'd like to work on it, but, um, they're curious what the quality is like or something like that. But I think it's really important for me to be transparent and open, not just about like this canvas, but in general with you guys. And part of that includes sharing my thoughts and opinions on my canvases. And I'm not doing it. If I say something negative, it's not, oh, look at this creator out here bashing a company that closed because I... No matter what my thoughts are or my experiences are with this company or with any company for that matter, the people behind the company are real people with real lives and real families and I don't wish ill will on anyone. That being said, I can still express if I had a negative or positive experience. I'm not going into this being like, get ready to hear me bash them, but I do want to put that out there because I know there are some people that are going to be like, well, why are you going to do a post review if not only you can't buy this, but you can't buy anything else from them? Um... And those are my thoughts and feelings. And maybe I will be able to say them more eloquently when I film the post review. Maybe it'll be less eloquent. I have no idea. But I did want to just get that off my chest. Because um, I did go back and forth with it. But I'm like, if I'm spending all this time working on it, and I do have thoughts and feelings on it, it's not just like, okay, well, let me scramble something together. I have a whole page excuse me, of notes about this canvas, um, and it's just unfortunate, the timing of the situation, I mean, the whole situation is unfortunate, they were really beloved by a lot of people in this community, and, um, I know there are a lot of people out there who are very sad to see them go, and to no longer be able to access that library of a lot of beautiful art, that being said. If you guys have any thoughts and opinions on it, feel free to share them down below. But please do it in a, a kind manner because 
you know? Actually, side note, speaking of being kind, um, I reached out to a company. I was talking about this on my Instagram, so if you follow me on Instagram and you saw it on my stories, it's just going to be a repeat. But there's a company, they sell a specific food product. And they had an advertisement basically comparing their product and the quality of it to that of a supermarket brand of the same product. Well, I have no problem with, like, telling... I'm not going to tell somebody how to make an advertisement. Like, I'm not a marketing executive. I'm not, I'm not... I'm not trying to tell anyone how to live their life. But what I will say is that when you market yourself as the best in whatever it may be, in that product, in whatever it is, okay... This is relevant to diamond painting stuff. It's not just me talking about this food product. Um, you can do so. Like, if, if you're saying that you have no competition, then there's no need for you to mention your competitor. If you're saying you're number one, there's no need for you to mention who you think is the number two. There just isn't. If you're already saying we are heads and shoulders above everyone else, well, then you don't need to mention it. Okay, I am hoping that... I do not like these AVs. I'm just going to say that. Uh, I've said that before. But it's, like, that weird, it, like, sheds into my my wax, and I can't have fresh wax because it'll rip it out. But I can't have wax that's too dirty or it won't pick it up. But I also don't feel like pulling out tweezers for, like, six ABs. Anyway, so I emailed the company, and I was like, listen, I'm not posting this on your Facebook page, which is where I saw the ad, or under the ad itself, because it's not my job to sway somebody else from making a purchase from a company that I've never made a purchase from. Okay, I can't speak to the quality of the product because I did, I've never purchased the product. The difference is that I can go and access the supermarket version um, because it's in the supermarket. And it, I don't have to pay for shipping and I don't have to worry about it being shipped on ice and things like that. And frankly, I don't want to spend $50 on a product and then $20 to have it shipped on ice... When I don't know if I'm going to like their version of it. I do know that I like the supermarket version of it. Sorry. Um, because I've had it and I can access it. And this ad was basically tearing another company down in order to bring themselves up. And I was like, listen, I'm not sure if this is what your intention was. But it should be community over competition. Okay. That goes with every community. Not just the let's sell food community. Okay. It was so frustrating to me to see this company tearing down another company in their ad to build themselves up and I'm like you know it now makes me questions like what your morals and your ethics are and I would love to try your product and I'm not I'm you know and they I was like I'm sure you'll never read this or respond and they did respond and they said they are gonna pass it along because that was never their intentions but it not only bothered me because it was like what was the point of that but if you're saying that you have no competition then there's no need to bring them in I'm just gonna say it it comes in waves in the diamond painting community, I'm mean, in every community, but this is the one I'm most currently active with. And sometimes I'm aware of it happening, and other times I'm totally in the dark. And um, But the thing is, if two people sell the same, like, the amount of pen turners that are out there, just because I support one pen turner doesn't mean that I'm taking business away from another. Just because I order from one tray company doesn't mean I'm no longer... I'm, I'm returning my trays from another company. There's more than enough out there for people to build each other up while supporting one another without having to tear someone down. If you feel the need to tear someone down in order to build yourself up, you're doing it wrong. Now, listen, I'm not sitting here saying that I'm a saint, that you need to be a saint, because at the end of the day, we're all going to run to our closest people friends, families, besties, whatever, and we're going to vent to them about the things that are going on in our life, whether they are big, little, seem big or little, you know, whatever it is. Um, that drill was little, speaking of little. Um, and now I just dropped it. Boop, boop, boop. I desperately need to trim my nails and take my nail polish off, so excuse me for that. Um, but it's just very frustrating, and I see, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say... You don't have to say it. You, you know, like, we were all taught, if you have nothing nice to say, then don't say anything at all. And I'm not saying that we should all be, like, compliant or complicit. 
But just if you don't have anything to contribute positively to the conversation, then find a different conversation or change your mindset. Like when you are in the Diamond Art Club Facebook group, if you're in the Diamond Art Club Facebook group, the amount of times I see people post, oh, thank God I'm safe this week. Just because the art is not your cup of tea doesn't mean that it's not somebody else's cup of tea. Uh, and it's, it, I understand it's your way of saying like, oh, thank God I don't have to buy anything this weekend. Um, but, you know, if you're that artist who spent a lot of time creating that art and you see all these people being like, phew, I'm safe. This is, this, this is not what I want. You know, that, that can be hurtful. So instead, like, there's plenty of weeks that, like, Diamond Art Club or any company releases canvases that I'm like, well, that is not my style, but I can appreciate that it's someone else's style, but I'm not out there verbalizing and vocalizing, like, this is hideous. Because it makes people, sorry, it makes people feel bad. Just, it's just frustrating. I see it with other people in the community. I see it with other creators. I see it with other small shops. I see it outside of the diamond painting world. And I know that we all have a lot going on, and I just really wanted to just take this moment. I have this platform. Just, you know, if you question it in your head whether you should say it, then you probably shouldn't. Um, and I'm, I'm also not trying to censor anybody, but freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences. So, that's my rant. I'm going to get into my week, tell you guys all the things I did, um, or not, depending on how much time I have, but... I really just wanted to touch base with that. And if you guys hung in for my little mini rant, um, thanks. But I hope that you guys are all well. Um, and just in case anybody uh, has a guilty conscience and thinks, oh, well, if the shoe fits. I'm not talking about anything specific. I'm not addressing any behind-the-scenes drama or outward drama. I'm not addressing anything specific. Just the incident with the food company really made me think, like, so many, so many people are so quick to just tear someone else down to bring themselves up. And it just, I just wanted to shed some light. Anyway, I hope that you guys are well. I've said that like three times. Um, last week, it was, I mean, every week it feels like it's sheer chaos. Uh, I don't know if I have mentioned to you guys that my daughter is still not fully registered for kindergarten. Because it seems like every week there's a new issue. Something is wrong with the paperwork. They don't have the right proof of uh, address. They don't have the right proof of this. So I got, I don't remember if I talked about this in my last one or not because I don't remember the time frame. But it has been a nightmare with part of her vaccination records didn't get sent properly to the school. And then they're like, oh, we also don't have her dental records. And I was like, you didn't say you needed the dental records on the first form of these are all the things we need. So I don't have the dental form. Um, so I had to go back to the dentist, back to the pediatrician. And then I had to, I, school nurse was telling me something about they do vision screenings, but okay, rewind. My daughter got her glasses this week. We I talked about that in, I think, last week's Whip and Chatter, the week before that we went in for the eye exam and all of that stuff. But the actual glasses themselves came in. Um, but this is a fun fact. Um, I can't have it added to my daughter's... I mean, I can have them mention it in my daughter's 504 or IEP or whatever. Uh, but they can't do anything about it. Like, I don't even think that they can enforce that she wears them, which is crazy to me. Because it's not, she's not visually impaired. Explain something to me. I have a driver's license. I've had a driver's license for 24 years. I've been wearing contacts the entire time I've had a driver's license. It says on my driver's license. And I know I'm only speaking about Pennsylvania IDs. I have no idea what other state IDs look like. But it has corrective lenses are required on my thing. And it says I can, I am legally not allowed to drive a vehicle without corrective lenses. So like if I got pulled over and I didn't have my contacts or glasses, like I could get in trouble for that. Now, is a police officer going to know if I'm wearing contacts? No, but hopefully that, that never is an issue. But I'm just saying, so that is visually impaired enough that it's required to be on my driver's license. But yet my daughter, you have to be like almost blind or to be considered on the blindness scale spectrum 
for it to be considered visual impairment. I'm like, but you're telling me that I'm visually impaired and I can't drive a vehicle without corrective lenses. Like, I just, I just don't understand. I just, I just don't understand. I feel like I hear uh, Will Smith, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Parents just don't understand. That's how I feel right now. I just don't understand. Um, but it's frustrating because it's like, how many things do I have to keep going back and forth with? And because it's the summer, like nobody answers emails or phone calls. They only reach out to you when it's something that they need, but they don't want to answer you when you're like, okay, well, what else do you have everything? Has everything been received? Has everything been processed? Because I also can't get a class placement until my daughter is considered officially registered. Do they let you know? No. So here I am still figuring, like, am I, are we registered? Are we good now? Or are you going to find something else to tell me that I haven't had this done? This has been months of, like, going back and forth. And I'm like, if it's this hard just to get my kid to, to start kindergarten, like, how hard is it going to be when they're older? But the whole point of the vision thing is that they apparently do vision screenings at the school. Vision and hearing screenings. And I was like, well, why does she need a vision screening if she just got glasses? And they said, oh, well, you can opt out of it, but we need a, pres a copy of your prescription. And I'm like... So you need a copy of her prescription to prove that she's had an eye exam, even though she's wearing glasses. But that's not something that I can have listed with her accommodations. Somebody please make it make sense to me because... My daughter needs her glasses. They're not like, oh, let me use them for like reading. Or let me... They're only for when I'm on a computer. Like these are like all the time glasses now. And it's just frustrating. It just, it feels like I get so excited and like we're climbing up this, this hill. And then it's like, oh, well, you just fell down like 15 steps. It's like, cool. And I know, and this is not me being like, I give up. But I know, I've been saying to myself more than I should, that things would probably be a lot easier if I just didn't care as much. Which is a terrible, like, mindset to be in as a parent because I want what's best for my kid. And that's why it hurts so much when you get met with so much resistance because that's all you want. You want the best for your loved ones. And <sighs> it's just exhausting. It just feels like I'm on, like, a never-ending hamster wheel. Um, but anyway, Sunday we watched The Haunted Mansion. That's the first time I've actually seen The Haunted Mansion. Um... My daughter and I saw a preview for the new Haunted Mansion with Danny DeVito in... What did we see that in? Oh, uh, The Little Mermaid. When we were... Okay, where did that color go? What's A, B's um, that I already put away. And she's like, this looks good. And I'm like, Briar, Mommy and Daddy have been trying to get you to watch like the original one for ages. Of course she watched it and she loved it. So if you guys have any age-appropriate spooky books or movies... For, like, kindergarten-aged children, please let me know. Because I've had some people tell me Coraline and other people tell me Coraline, like, traumatized them. Um, I'm not sure if Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is a little too scary for her. I kind of want to get some goosebumps because she loves reading. And also, like, the movies exist. Or movie. I don't know how many there were. Um, I feel like I'm going to have to change the wax in this. I don't want to. But we didn't do anything else. And then Monday... It was back to the Kia dealership. We picked up the car um, and we opted to. It's happening. We opted to hang on to our rental for a little bit longer um, just in case. I find it very suspicious. We had, we had our local mechanic that we have been seeing for quite some time that we trust, that we've gone to for all of our issues, um, tell us that this could be like up to a $10,000 repair, which is very daunting when you are talking about a four-year-old car. Uh, but if you didn't see my last web in chat, um, I'll link that up in the eye for you guys. But let me write that down. Um, I just forgot what I was saying. Something about last week's web in chat in the car. Oh, but Kia fought with us on telling us that they're not going to service our car um, it's not going to be covered under warranty because we've been negligent with the car, which is completely false. We ended up calling our insurance company because they offer our car, uh, like an extended warranty or whatever. And so a, an investigation was launched. Cool. Okay. Well, then all of a sudden we get a call from Kia saying, oh my gosh, your car's ready. And I was like, how did this, how is this ready so quickly? 
when we're being told this is like a huge repair. Well, it turns out they said, oh, well, we just changed the oil and flushed and flushed everything out. And I'm like, so you're telling me that it was as simple as an oil change, even though a couple days earlier you were saying there was like engine failure and um, nothing was going to be covered under warranty because we didn't take care of our car, which again is completely false. And then now all of a sudden, now that the insurance is involved, you're like, oh, hey, um, it was just an oil change. Here you go. I don't know. Something seems amiss. So that's why I was like, let's hang on to the rental just in case. Because there's nothing worse than like handing in the rental and then being like, oh, crap. Now the car has to go back into the shop. Um, which was my fear, to be completely honest with you. And I think it's a very justified fear, but it was still a fear nonetheless. All right. I got to change this wax. Here's my handy dandy tool. Um, I actually should probably change this tip. I'm now realizing that it's completely cracked. I don't know if you guys can see that. Nope, it wants to focus on the background. There we go. Anyway, um, so we held on to it, and um, and then we did this, like, right when they first opened, and then we went to our very last meeting with our itinerant teacher through the IU uh, because my daughter is off to kindergarten in the fall. She's no longer part of, like, the preschool um, she doesn't have an IEP through the preschool anymore. Now it gets picked up by the public school system or whatever you're doing for schooling. And so it was bittersweet because we've been with that particular teacher. It is storming. That is what that noise is. Um, we've been with that particular teacher since Briar turned three and my child is on the older end of going to kindergarten. Like, she'll turn six in the beginning of the school year. Uh, so, for, you know, two and a half years, she's been with this itinerant teacher who is basically, like, the head special ed teacher through the IU for her. Um, but it was nice, and it was, you know, a little bittersweet. And um, she's like, oh, well, she'll still see me because I'm... I'm over there uh, with the kindergarten, or with the elementary school, too. And I'm like, you are? I don't know if that's a new thing or something I didn't know about, but let me take a sip of water. But that would be nice for my daughter to have a friendly face in the school, you know, every once in a while. But, um, we did that, and then we went and grabbed some lunch right afterwards, um, just because it made sense. And then, what else did we do that day? Oh, later in the evening, we had our Learn to Skate, one of our three lessons of the week. And it's very interesting because we do two different group lessons at two different ranks. And then we do one private lesson at one of the ranks we do a group lesson at. I know it's very confusing. Um, but... When we used to do our old lessons... They were tots. So we had a lot more time with her coach to ask questions and whatever. And now, because it's a big group lesson, um, if I, you know, if she's already out there, like before, I don't have time to talk to her. And I've been having questions about my daughter's skates for a little bit and then I can't ask her when we go for our private lesson because she has a lesson directly before and directly after so fun story I actually got her skate sharpened this week which I'll tell you guys about but then like I'm now 99% sure that I have to actually get her skates new skates and I'm like well great I just spent all that money to sharpen these blades um it is what it is but so what we've been doing is we've been going to the Monday night one, because that's like 5.45-ish. No. I don't remember. There are too many different times happening. But either way, when she gets out of it, I think that one is 5 to... I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I have no idea. Just ignore that. But she's getting out of her lesson and then being like, I'm starving. So we've hit this weird spot of like, if we have dinner beforehand, she's eating dinner at like 4 something. But if we do it afterwards, she's too hungry. So we've been hitting up McDonald's, which is down the street, for her. And then Arby's for me, because I don't eat McDonald's. Um, and in all honesty, if Arby's didn't have mozzarella sticks, I wouldn't have anything left to eat at Arby's either. They got rid of all the turkey sandwiches. At least the ones near us did. I don't know about the ones near you, but um, it's kind of a bummer. But anyway, 
it just, she's getting out and getting so hungry and it, she's like ravenous. And I can understand, like you just worked up an appetite. So for this week, we're actually going to try something different. We're actually going to try maybe a bento box that she can eat in the car. Um, like we have grapes at home, but I don't want her eating grapes while driving because that's like total choking hazard. Um, and if you are new here or newer here, then you probably have no idea, like, my daughter's health history, but she has a history of, um, dysphagia and aspirating, and, um, I really don't want to, she choked more than the average child did while she struggled with feeding. Clearly, the easiest way to describe it. And it just makes me more fearful, um, going forward. I hope that made sense. Because um, I know there's going to be somebody listening to this being like, mm, I think that you're just overreacting. I might be, but when you watch your child struggle to breathe and eat and watch them, like, choke on every bottle, you know, it's it's very traumatizing. Uh, and um, I don't know if I've talked about it much on here, but I've acknowledged the fact that I do deal with, like, medical PTSD and, um, you know, I have good days and bad days and sometimes I'll I see a post on the internet and be like, and it brings everything back or I'll hear a baby out in public and it just brings everything back and it's, I mean, something that I should, you know, go work on with an actual professional, but, you know, who's got time these days, right? I keep thinking there's, like, something going on downstairs and it's just thunder, but, um, that was the big thing. So then Tuesday... My daughter and I went back to that library program that I was talking about last week, and they gave them these, like, do-it-yourself Play-Doh kits, and it was a bug garden kind of thing. Hers came with a butterfly and something else. I think a spider, but I don't know where the spider went. Um, but she loves butterflies, so that was perfect. And then it came with Play-Doh, and then you could add in, like, dried noodles and... Um, that were dyed different colors and different things to put in your Play-Doh kit. And for the last week, it's been going with us, like, everywhere we go. What letter was I just working on? Here we go. Um, so that was super fun, and I love that that was free. Uh, but it just, it's amazing that something so little and it is so powerful. We actually picked up some more little containers of Play-Doh because, well... You know, they drop half of it, it dries up, like, they need more. And could I make it at home? Probably. But I would rather just spend, like, a couple dollars and buy it. No, I don't have to deal with any of that. Convenience for me. Um, but we did that, and then we decided to drop off our car. Now... We, I said to my husband, like, I want to drop it off earlier rather than later because I don't want to get charged for a full day if, you know, it's 10 o'clock in the morning or whatever it was. Little did I know that for the first X amount of hours, they prorate it and then they, um, or they prorate in general. So we actually only paid for like two hours of that day, which I was like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, so that's good to know for the future, because if you say you're going to, if you pick it up at noon, then your drop off is noon. So anytime after that, you have to pay the additional time. So let's say you go Monday to Wednesday, noon to noon, but you decide to drop it off Tuesday at four. Well, it would be one whole day plus a prorated four hours. And I was like, oh, okay. That makes it easier. Um, but that's probably why they were calling us to be like, when are you coming to pick up the rental? Because we got out the door later than we wanted to when all of that was happening. Um, gosh, I'm really thirsty. Let me grab another sip. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but then afterwards, we went to the diner because it's literally right next door. And um, it's funny. My kid is so independent about so some things. And ordering her own lunch is one of those. And she was like... I will take the kid's pancake, and I would like it with this, and I'll have a water, please. And, you know, just very, very cute. And, um, I just had that color out, didn't I? I did. This is the problem with, like, super confetti-heavy canvases, is that I feel like no matter what, I find what I'm looking for, and then I put my color away, and then I'm like, um, I thought I found it all, but I didn't. Um, 
Excuse me. And then we ended up at Target in the evening. I don't remember why we went up that way. I know we got more Play-Doh that day. But if you guys are seeing this in current time, Target is having some major, major sales right now. I'm not sure how much of them are advertised. But they are pushing a lot of stuff to clear the shelves for back to school. And then they're going to be starting to put out, you know, stuff for the Christmas season. I don't mean decorations. I mean, like, gifts and things and change of clothing and just so many things on sale. So, like, if you're looking to pick up a few things, like, now's probably the time. Like, I mean, there were things that were 60, 70, 80% off on the shelf. And um, so we got a couple things. Oh, we went to get some of her school supplies. Um, like our school, so we got the kindergarten list, which is like the generic kindergarten list, and then you'll get like your teacher list. I've been told by some people that some of the kindergarten teachers, like they don't even care about the generic list, like they have their own list and none of it's the same stuff. I'm like, cool. Uh, but we needed to get low odor dry erase markers. We needed to get Crayola crayons, which I've already purchased. And then they wanted two Elmer's Jumbo glue sticks. Listen, I am not spending the money for the Elmer's Jumbo glue sticks right now. And I was like, well, we're either going to get Elmer's regular glue sticks that are normal price. The Jumbo ones, for some reason, are crazy expensive right now. Um, and then they had the Target brand, which was like a third of the price. So that's what I got. If they want to come for me they can come for me but it's just so frustrating that like why couldn't we have gotten even the generic list before now because uh at the end of the school year everything was marked down and i understand like planners and notebooks and things like that like they are time sensitive maybe not notebooks but um pencils and pens and markers and glue sticks and stuff are not so i would have liked to have been able to pick things up when they were still super super cheap and not have to wait until august when my kids start school in august to know what she needs it's very frustrating um does anybody else feel like they go through this much stress for back to school is this what i have to look forward to for the next however many years she's in school like it is seriously maddening to me sometimes Maybe, maybe it's just me. I don't know. I feel like I've been rambling for a really long time. Anyway, what do we do? The next day was Wednesday. Wednesday, my husband had something going on and we, um, he went independently and did his thing. And then my daughter and I went to her swimming lesson because they were at the same time. And after swimming, we went to pick up her glasses. We had gotten a call or a text that they, they were in. So, all right. I just did... I what also working on things is this I or one that's one which one's I sorry guys um the symbols that are printed are just about as great as the symbols that are on the canvas so um it was funny I took her to get her glasses and now I can't even find where I was just missing these All right, I'm going to keep this out because I know inevitably... Oh, there it is. I know there was another one too, but... Um, man. Anyway. Um, went to pick up her glasses. And I knew that this was going to be like a big deal because, you know, it's the first time she's really able to see. So she puts on the glasses and like her whole face changed. We went outside and it was like for the first time in her life she's really seeing nature. And, oh, my God, look how pretty that flower is. And, like, oh, look at the grass. And I was like, has her life just been that blurry? And, you know, I was talking to the woman. I don't know what her official job was there because she seemed way more knowledgeable than just, like, a receptionist. Um, but then she pulled out glasses for Briar to try on that they certainly did not show us when we were there that were smaller and more flexible in frames. And I asked her about, like, ordering some frames online for Briar, and they had said to me, you can order the frames online, but she has a really complicated um, prescription, and it might, it's very easy for them to screw something like that up. And I'm like, oh. Then she also informed me 
that my daughter is already at the very end of the most basic lenses. Like, if her prescription gets any worse, like any worse, even the slightest little bit, we can no longer get those basic lenses. We have to upgrade. Um, I think part of that is that they need to be thinned out. Um, she has, she's com the high end of moderate for uh, farsightedness and has a severe astigmatism. I'm like, <sighs> this is, this is great, you know. But this poor kid, and she put them on, and oh my god, you guys, I know I don't share photos of my kid, but she is seriously the cutest, and I know I'm biased, but like, she is seriously the cutest. So I've been waiting for days now for these frames that I ordered online. I ordered a try-on kit for them to get here so that we can try them on. Problem is, her face, all of her is little, but like, her face is too small for a lot of the little kid big kid glasses but she's too big for the baby glasses so I have to find that right happy medium and I uh, well I'd be a fool to not get a pair of backup glasses because she's five um, but I would like to also because she ice skates you know make sure that we have I would like something slightly more flexible um, hopefully that means less damage in the future but we'll see uh, but it was so sweet. And then after that, we picked up my husband and we grabbed lunch. Um, and at this point, my daughter had her glasses on for a couple hours, two hours, something like that. And you could just see, I felt terrible. You could see she was completely overwhelmed and completely overstimulated. And, and I don't think that's uncommon, but I think as adults, we don't realize that that's what we're dealing with because... Most of us are aware before we get our corrective lenses that our vision isn't great. Like, we're struggling to see. And all of a sudden, she's now seeing things she wasn't able to see before. There's just a lot of stimuli happening. And I could just see she was just having a hard time. And I know that there's an adjustment period. So, like, don't get me wrong. I, I, I was aware of that. I knew going in. I just didn't think it was going to hit her that hard that quickly. And we, I, she literally sat in the windowsill uh, at the restaurant and I just turned Bluey on on my phone. I am not that kind of mom, typically. And no shame if you are that kind of parent or caretaker. Uh, it just, usually if something is on, she's no longer eating because she's distracted. Um, but in this instance, it allowed her to sit there and just kind of shut the world out and just be okay in her own bubble. And she's had a couple moments since then where she, you know, like in the car, she took off her glasses and I was like, sweetheart, you can't take your glasses off without telling anyone because you're, you don't want, I don't want you to ruin them first of all. But also, you know, I want to make sure that I'm aware when you're struggling so that I can kind of like, I don't, I don't even say this to her, but just so I can kind of keep tabs to see, is it happening daily? Is it, is it because she's getting a headache or whatever? You know, they were like, oh, well, she'll let you know if she has a headache. And I was like, no, she won't. Part of me wonders if her, the frames are slightly, they adjusted them around the ears. If they're slightly too tight, because I feel, feel a lot of resistance putting them on her head. And they're not going anywhere, which is great. Because again, she's five. But at the same token, I don't want them to be hurting her head. And she doesn't tell me these things. And it's amazing when an adult tries telling you, about your own child, and you're like, that's not how she functions. I know that's how most people function, but the amount of people that have argued with me, like, in general, well, she'll tell you if she doesn't feel well. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. I could watch her being, like, violently ill, and she'll not say, Mommy, I don't feel good. That's just not the kind of kid she is. I don't know if it's because she doesn't want to be a bother, or if she thinks this is normal. I have no idea, but she's always been like that. And, um... You know, no matter how many times I tell her, you got to let mommy know if you get a headache or your eyeballs hurt or, you know, if they pinch behind your ears. And, okay, mommy. And then she doesn't say anything. I don't know. But I can only go by, you know, like what I'm seeing as a parent. So, um, but she looks super cute in them, you guys. And I can't. I can't wait to get her another pair of frames. I'm looking into if anybody's ever purchased them, let me know. But uh, they're called Rochambeau. They started out as a company that did uh, baby and toddler sunglasses. And the frames are completely flexible. So they're, you know, indestructible by small children. And then they added in larger sizes. So they actually have babies, toddlers, 
little big kid and adult sizes now. And they've also added in prescription glasses. The thing that I love about this is you can also buy spare frames and you can pop the lenses out and put them in. So if you want to buy your first pair with your prescription lenses, you can also buy like three other pairs of different colors if you want. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to pop her prescription lenses if they get made outside of house into another frame or if I'll have to have the eye doctor reset them. I have no idea. But I've been waiting for this try-on kit. It was supposed to be here. It was out for delivery yesterday. And now it's back in the system. And it's like, sorry, your item might be delayed. And I'm just like, I just want the try-on pairs. Which I think is a great idea. They send them to you. You can try them on for, I think it's a week. Uh, you can decide which style you like. And I guess colors and things like that. And then you send them all back. And then you just order what you want if you want something. Um, so we did that. And then um, later that night. We actually had a very fun evening. My husband went to his brother's house. His brother and his nephew, uh, They went. he went over there for a little, like, cookout, I guess. And then I took Briar out with my mother-in-law. Um, you know, she keeps wanting to spend time with her. They keep wanting to spend time with each other, I should say, really. And it just, a lot of times, it just isn't happening with the schedule and... Um, I love all of Briar's grandparents, but one thing that is frustrating for me is that the women in our family tend to be late risers, and it's really hard to plan things when you have a kid that has activities and a nap. I mean, she doesn't nap during the nap time, but um, so sometimes, you know, it ends up being like a nighttime thing that we have to do or an evening thing because that's the only time of day that we can make it work. But it was great, and my daughter was not staying in her seat, and I was okay with that because even though she was moving around, she was pretty contained in one spot, and it was visible. You could see when the, the wait staff was coming, and um, it kept her from freaking out at the table. And I know it really bothered my mother-in-law, but I was like, I'd rather have this than have her sitting at the table and, like, flailing things around and just getting in the way of things. And just, it just wouldn't have been as enjoyable. So, at one point, my daughter says she has to go to the bathroom. And my mother-in-law says, you, I'm eating a salad. You're eating hot food. You, I'll take her. And I'm sitting there. I texted my husband. And I was like, they've been in there for a really long time. So, I walk back towards the bathrooms. And they're just, like, single bathrooms, not, like, a bathroom that has a bunch of stalls in it. And I was like, everything okay back here? Yeah. Turns out my daughter decided that she thought she had to go number two. So it was literally like 15, 20 minutes back there. And I just sat out and enjoyed my food. And when my mother-in-law, like when it came time to pay, she's like, well, let me at least cover, you know, the tip. And I was like, listen, I love you. You're not giving me a cent. You just gave me 20 uninterrupted minutes where I didn't feel selfish for enjoying my food, where I didn't have somebody touching me, talking to me, mommy, 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 asking me questions over and over and over again. Those moments don't exist in my world. And she was like, oh, okay. And she was like, thanks. Um, which I wasn't going to let her pay anyway. But like, honestly, that moment was glorious for me. But she came out and she was telling me this story and she texted me about it like the next day to thank me again. My daughter was wearing a skirt that day, a uh, pencil skirt. And she apparently, when she was done sitting on the toilet, got all freaked out. And she's like, I can't find my underwear. Turns out it was just in her skirt. But she couldn't figure that out. And so she, like, kept... You know when dogs look for their tails? It was one of those kinds of moments. And my mother-in-law said, like, she hasn't laughed that hard about something in a really long time. And I was glad that she had that kind of fun moment with, with my kiddo. And that it also meant that I got to have a couple moments to myself. And so I was very, very appreciative and thankful. Um, let me find number 19. But that was a super fun day, and I'm glad that we did that. Um, the next day, my kiddo had riding, like, super, super early because there was a summer camp going on. And we also had a lesson um, at the other rink. And 
the routine has been we pick up pizza because it's like around the corner. I can place an order on my phone while we're at the rink or I can place it earlier in the day and set it for pickup at a certain time. Um, but it's easier because it's dinner time when she gets out. It's, again, it's the, do we have dinner early or do we have dinner late? Because everything happens at dinner time. And I understand that. I mean, it's not my favorite, but I understand. Especially if, like, your working parents can't really do it too much earlier in the day because, like, parents need to work and then come home. Um, or caretakers or whoever. But, as the caretaker of this tiny human, it is frustrating when I have to make the decision, do we have dinner at, like, 4 o'clock or dinner at, like, 7 o'clock? Um... And some days that decision is easier to make than others. And other days it's like, no matter what I choose, it's going to be the wrong one. Um, but we enjoy their pizza. And for right now, you know, I know if she goes higher levels that maybe, maybe pizza every week isn't the, the best option in terms of nutrition. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So... We did that, and then Friday, we had our private lesson, and as I had mentioned, my daughter, uh, her coach has a lesson before and a lesson afterwards, so I've been wanting to ask her a couple questions about her skates, and I have almost no knowledge of ice skating. I skated, I figure skated as a child, not competitively at all. I never did like spins or jumps or anything like that. I just skated. Uh, and then when I got old enough, I switched over and I played ice hockey in high school. And I was mediocre at best on both of those things. Um, but my daughter comes over to me and asks me, Mommy, when you performed, that's how she calls it, did you have to wear underwear? And I was like, I have no idea, kiddo. I didn't, I never got to that level. And she's like, oh. And I was like, what's up? And she's like, well, my coach told me that you can't wear underwear when you compete. And I was like, I have no idea, baby girl. And so then, of course, the coach comes over and she's like, listen, when she comes over and asks you a question that I told her, tell her yes. And I'm like, but she didn't. That's the thing. She came over and she asked me about my experience and then mentioned that it came from you. Like, for all I know, this was just something that she just questioned because she asks questions all the time. She literally will go, can I ask you a question? And you're like, yeah, what's up? And then she'll think about it and ask you a question. And I'm like, so you didn't have a question ready to ask? Okay. Um, and then she also let me know she does not like how the other coaches are teaching her stroking. And I'm like, like I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this information. Um, like, I love our coach. And I love the growth that my daughter has been making, but I can't tell another coach how to teach or not teach my child a skill in a group lesson. The problem is my daughter is not mature enough to handle being at freestyle ice on her own, but I don't have it in me to have her have multiple lessons a week right now where she's with her coach on the ice um, it's expensive, it adds up, and it's not that I don't want my kid to have the best, but, like, she's also five, and I need to take into consideration if this is something she does long term, like, I don't want to blow the ice skating budget before kindergarten started, you know what I mean? But I'm just like, okay, um, but I guess it is <laughs> what it is at this point. And then afterwards, we went and got, uh, a very, very early dinner. Like, her lesson is over at 4.15, um... But a couple of the other kiddos that she coaches, she had them showing Briar how to do certain skills, uh, which I've noticed that she does. I don't know if that's how a lot of coaches work, where they help as much as they can. And then instead of doing it themselves to show a child, especially because like our coach is a little bit older, um, they just have somebody who knows how to do that skill. They're not teaching Briar how to do it. They're just showing her, like, look, this is this is what it looks like. And so she got to see some of these kids who are only a couple years older than her doing the skills that she wants to master. So that was nice. Oops. Um, all right. I have, like, a pile of drills over here because I don't feel like putting them away. Anyway, so next day was Saturday. Um, I met Erica of Kevin's Creations for a coffee meeting um we were 
starting to put some ideas about our potential uh, retreat pen to paper, which was really helpful. Um, sorry, I'm trying to put some of these colors away while I'm talking. And I'm really glad we came up with a couple things that we thought were great ideas, a couple things we like didn't want to do. Um, you know, the goal is to have this next year, 2024. Uh, when I'm not a hundred sure we have to tour the facility that we're looking at before we decide for sure that this is where we want it to be, which makes sense. Obviously we don't tell everybody this is where we're going. And then we get to the facility and it's awful. And you know, um, but it also helps us see what limitations we have, what we need to really iron out. And, um, so I'm really excited that we have gotten as much discussed as we did. Of course, I, she had to go meet somebody. She made us, they had a sale. There was a local pickup. Um, and I had to take Briar's skates to get sharpened. Now I went out with Erica and I had a t-shirt on because I was like, I tend to not wear certain shirts around the kids at the rink because, you know, they can read. Briar's five and does not know how to read quite yet. Um, so I had a shirt on that says, and this is going to be explicit if you have a small child around. It says, I know everything happens for a reason, but what the fuck? I thought nothing of it because I was going to meet with Erica. Again, she's a grown up. So then I go to take my daughter's skates to get sharpened. Um, the guy who sharpens them is actually very, very close to where I live. So that's very helpful. Uh, and I was like, okay, I want to get them sharpened before skate camp for this week. And, um, I walk in and one of the other skating families was in there. And this was the same little girl who just less than 24 hours earlier, showed my daughter how to do a certain skill. And she is, I think she's eight. And she's sitting there and I, I walked in with this shirt on and I was like, <gasps> so I don't think she took notice. I don't think the mother took notice, but I sat there the entire time in this man's house with a tote bag glued to my stomach, which I'm sure that if anybody saw that, they thought like I was just being insecure about like my, the way I, I looked or whatever. But it was, in reality, it was like, I don't want this child to read what my shirt says. Not that I'm ashamed of it, but it's also not my place to, like, expose her child to profanity. And, um, you know, she was all excited. She just hit her first axle and um, was very, very excited to tell me all about it. And, and I got my daughter's skate sharpened. And I've had a hunch for a while that I think her skates might be getting too small. And so they told me the best way to do it is to take out the insole and step on the insole. So I did. And, you know, she wiggles around so it's hard to tell. But I'm like, oh, crap. I'm pretty sure. I'm like 99% sure that her skates are just at the end or too small for her already. And I did ask. I said, can these be stretched? Because some skates, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but some ice skates, they can be. Um, they can be, like, heat treated and stretched because they're made out of leather um and when you're spending i don't pay these prices because i'm still in toddler skates but when you're spending the prices you are on ice skates as long as the boot hasn't broken down which you need the support in the boot especially if you're doing um your jumps if the support is still there but your foot just happens to have grown that it's worth being able to stretch it. Now, there are people who spend thousands of dollars on their skates and their blades, and I completely understand why somebody would want to, you know, get the most bang for their buck. You know what I mean? Um, unfortunately, he's like, I don't think these ones will stretch. Now, I have toddler size ice skates for her uh, because she has peanut feet, like really, really tiny feet. She wears like a size 9, a 9C, which is usually what, like, three-year-olds wear I think um and she's gonna be six this fall so you know she's just got really tiny feet and I'll tell you she did not get that from my husband um my husband is a, a large man like that's never been something that I've been like let's hide that fact but my husband wears a size six or 15 shoe 
So I, she, and I just have average size feet, but she's got these teeny tiny little peanut feet. Now I will say, I can't be super mad because she's been wearing these same skeets for over a year now, which I'm quite impressed by. Um, but when I heard the other mom say that this is her daughter's third pair of skates this year, cause she's just growing like a weed. I'm like, oh man. Um, but it's one of those things they have to fit her. They have to, um, make sure they're getting the right boot and the, and we, ours come together. When you get to higher levels, the boots and the blades don't come together. You have to pick the ones that you want to go together. Um, and there are different blades for different things and there's different boots for different kinds of feet and like different skill levels and all these fun things. And, um, you know, mine just come together because again, they're for toddlers. And even if you have a toddler who wears a size like nine ten, um, and they are at that level where they are doing higher end moves or higher skilled moves, chances are if you have a child that's able to do any kind, any of their single jumps, um, they're probably still under, I think it's under 40 pounds. So like, they'd probably be getting these anyway. Um, but don't quote me on that. I am not an expert. And I was talking to this mom and she was telling me, like, she's like, I don't know the difference between a lot of these things. And um, I was like, okay, well, that makes me feel a little bit better because I feel so clueless at the rink. Like, I watch other parents and caretakers and they seem to really, like, know what's up. I don't know if they have experience themselves or they just are really up to date on this kind of stuff. But I'm like... I've tried watching videos and I still don't understand the difference between this jump and this jump. Um, I don't know. And I want to help my daughter, but like the one day Brian and I were like so excited. She did a move that we thought she was, she did a great job on. And she's like, don't, don't cheer for that. That wasn't right. And I was like, oh, okay. But I also want to encourage my child, like when she's doing a good job. So that's, you know, a fun, a fun place to be stuck at. But I... Oh, I just pinched my finger. Um, but yeah, I got the skates and I'm like, oh man, now I'm going to have to actually pay to get new skates. But I have to make an appointment with this guy and then I have to bring the skates in just to make sure. And I have to bring her in because they have to measure her foot. And then he has to place the order for them. Then they have to come in and then the, sh the blades have to be sharpened because if you didn't know that when you buy brand new ice skates, the blades are not sharpened. I don't know if that's true for like every blade ever but I'm 99.9% .9 sure it is unless it's like I shouldn't say that I say unless it's like the super cheapy ones that you get from uh like Dick's Sporting Goods that has like you know straps across the top um but I just grab this color only a few of this but yeah that was that was fun um Sunday we went my husband needed to get uh something from Joanne's and while he was at Joanne's, he dropped Briar and I off, and we went over to Home Goods, and we got a new Halloween throw. We got another um, decoration that we will 100% have up year round in our house. It's like a stack of books with skulls and butterflies. Um, and then after that, we grabbed some dinner while we were out, and I think that might be it. Um, I do want to say I have, I placed another order with Firefly. They had an amazing sale. Um, if you guys didn't see my Firefly unboxing, I'll link that one up in the eye for you guys. But I had, uh, what was I going to say? They had an oops and end of roll overstock sale happening. And I was able to snag, I think, three trays. So I have those coming. And then I have my um, Traveler system ones that I ordered when those were released. So I will unbox all of those when they come in. But if you guys are interested in getting trays from them, I highly, highly, highly recommend joining their Facebook group. Because getting an overstock or oops tray at a fraction of the cost to be able to try something, I think is a really great idea, especially for a company that has like multiple styles. Um, and so, uh, I just, I'm very excited. I really have been enjoying their trays. This is the one that I use the most. This is the Inferno mini. 
don't know if you guys can see that or not. Um, but I'm excited to share the ones I got with you guys when they come in. But I think that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Uh, when I am done this one, I am planning on working on my Diamond Artisan that I recently unboxed. I'll leave that one up in the eye if you guys like to see that. Um, but... I think that's, I think that might be it, you guys. I think that's all I got for you. If you made it all the way to the end, um, leave me some school emojis since we're all back to school. Maybe we're not all, but some of us are in back to school mode. Um, and that's it. That's all I got for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you'd like to see more videos like this or, you know, nothing like this at all, please make sure to give this video two thumbs up, one real life, one virtual. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Come join the Sparkle Squad. While you're there, hit that notification bell. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time and I record when my tiny human is sleeping or sleeping. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.